What up, everybody? Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4, Episode 4 picked up where Episode 3 left off after Tariq and Monet received the ring door cam footage of Diana at Kate Egan's. And Tariq was on his way to Diana's dorm room with Brayden behind him. Tariq busts the door open, but Diana wasn't in there. Brayden then asked Tariq, What are you going to do, kill her in front of a million witnesses in her dorm? Tariq replied, anywhere this bitch is, she's getting a bullet. This is the mindset that Monet talked to Drew about having in the flashback scene this episode. She told Drew, if anyone comes for us, you take them out. That's the name of the game, life or death. And Tariq has this mindset that Diana has to go for trying to take out Tasha. And as Kane and Monet walked into Diana's dorm room a few seconds after Tariq and Brayden, Kane agreed with Tariq about this and said Drew and Diana had to go for what they did. At this point, Drew and Diana were on the run and checked into a hotel room. But instead of using cash to pay for the hotel, Diana used her credit card that linked back to Monet. So Monet showed up at the motel looking for them and pistol whipped the clerk to get their room number. Monet, Kane, and Tariq all moved recklessly at some point this episode. That could definitely have consequences with law enforcement later on. And Monet pistol whipping the clerk definitely could have consequences because she told the man her last name and the motel had security cameras all over the place. Because like I've said before on this channel, I'm a five-time felon. But only one was related to my 10 years spent in the game. The rest of them, and the reason why I ended up in prison, was from doing some reckless dumb shit like we saw Monet, Kane, and Tariq do this episode. Monet then showed up at their hotel room door just as Diana and Drew were about to leave after Drew found out that she didn't pay with cash. Monet went on to tell them about how she gave them everything, and then she taught them the game. But Drew tried explaining to Monet that they never wanted in the game in the first place. And when Drew started calling her out about Zeke, Lorenzo, and Gordo, and then called her a bitch, she approached Drew, giving Diana the opportunity to push her over so they could escape. And Kane showed up a few minutes too late and emptied the clip into Drew's car as they drove away, keeping in mind, like I said earlier, that the motel had cameras all over the place. While this is going on, we get the only scene with Effie this episode as Tariq turns to Effie to see if she knew where Diana was. But honestly, in my personal opinion, I think Tariq was turning to Effie to vent because he don't really got nobody else to talk to. But Effie wasn't feeling sorry for Tariq after he played her last episode to get Roman off the board. Speaking of Roman, he's now trying to snitch on Zion to get out of trouble. Zion's real name is Marshall Washington. But when Kamal brought this to Carter, Carter shot it down, then told Kamal's story about his friend named Rob, and then said that they should focus on the Tejadas and Tariq. Carter then went to visit Monet and said that they had an eyewitness that said they saw Tariq flee in the scene at the time she got shot. Do they actually have an eyewitness, or is he just making this up like he did last week saying they had photos of Obi and Tariq together? But it is possible they do have a witness saying that Tariq was at the scene because he was, even though he wasn't actually the shooter. And as Carter was talking to Monet, Tate went to talk to Tariq, telling him that they have somebody saying he was on the scene as well, attempting to divide and conquer. When Carter left Monet's house, he left her his card. This could definitely come back into play later on if Carter becomes too much of a problem. In season three, Whitman left Monet his card and ended up getting dealt with because he was overzealous. Could Carter make the same mistake? After Drew and Diana spent the night sleeping in Drew's car, Drew then decided he needed to go to his stash spot so they could get money to get out of town. But he said that he needed to go alone and wanted Diana to go to somewhere safe. So Drew dropped Diana off at Salim's, then went to the stash spot. But when he got there, Kane was waiting for him and had plenty of opportunity to take Drew out, but used this as a chance to tell Drew what was actually on his heart, about how he was the black sheep of their family, but he still stayed loyal, and the game was all he has. And Drew was able to take the pistol from Kane and get away, 
similar to how Rock did Panessa in Raising Cain in Season 3. And this also goes full circle with Drew's first kill that we saw this episode in the flashback scene. Drew had an art fair at his school that he told Monet about two weeks prior. But Monet made him miss it so he could learn how to do collections. Like she told Janet, she taught her kids to put the game over everything. And like Drew told Monet in the motel, you don't give a fuck about us. You don't care about what we want or what we need. You never have. But this collection went wrong, causing Monet to pull her pistol out on the man. And the man knocked it out of her hand and pinned her up against the wall. When Drew picked up the gun and killed the man. This man's name was Lex. Trick and Brayden met up at Stansfield after looking for Diana all over campus. And Brayden asked Tariq if he really thinks he needs to be worried about Drew and Diana right now when they need to be setting up shop. And like we saw Ghost do with Tommy so many times in power, Tariq left Brayden to run the business while he took care of other things. Brayden has now also hooked up with Elle. And her use of powder is continuing to rub off on Brayden as we saw him snorting again this episode. And Brayden had everything planned out at this point also, but Elle had also figured everything out. So Brayden just asked her to act like she doesn't know. And she agreed under the condition that Brayden would give her a little product off the top. And when he told her that Tariq wouldn't agree to that, she convinced him just not to let Tariq know. So L now has Brayden doing coke, lying to Tariq. In addition to that, he talked about Tariq to L, letting her know that Tariq was his business partner when he should have just kept Tariq's name out of his mouth. This is similar to how Tommy told Holly that James was ghost in power. And something I found very interesting that I know wasn't done for no reason is the fact that the merch that they're using to move their product is called No Lie. Very similar to how Ghost Club was called Truth. And another way to say truth could be by saying no lie. At this point, Diana had been at Salim's longer than expected. And Salim started pressing her about what was really going on. When she told him that she was in danger and needed to get out of town, Salim gave Diana keys to a car and said that she could stay at one of his parents' houses in Greenwich. But Pinky already had eyes on Diana and texted Tariq Salim's address. While Diana was on her way to Greenwich, Kane was getting dressed up to go with Noma to a ball so she could talk to a man named Wiley Adams to attempt to bribe him concerning government contracts for her legal business and her U.S. citizenship. But at this dinner, Kane's mind was still on getting to Drew, sending out a text to get eyes on Drew again. As soon as he was done distracting Kevin Grant so Noma could talk to Wiley, he got the text with Drew's location. Drew was at a convenience store that the Tejadas used as a stash spot, trying to rob it for the money he needed to get out of town. This is reminiscent of Rock using the bodega as her stash spot in Raising Canaan. Kane then crept up on Drew at the stash spot and was ready to take him out this time, when he got the call from Monet telling him to let Drew go. And Kane listened to Monet, but not before beating Drew down and telling him that he's out the game with Noma and to get his things out of the penthouse. Monet told Kane to let Drew go because earlier in the episode, Monet had a conversation with Janet. And Janet checked Monet, letting her know that everything was her fault. And dropping the bombshell news to her that Diana is pregnant. This mixed with her flashback of Drew's first kill caused Monet to have a change of heart. And she decided to forgive Drew and Diana, and she told Cain not to kill Drew. Then she went to Salim's parents' house in Greenwich to save Diana after she talked to Drew and he said he would text her the address. And Janet is now packed and ready to go back to Atlanta, but we'll see if she's gone or not next episode because she was supposed to leave last episode. But keep Atlanta in mind because Diana talked about moving there last season. And I just made a video last week about a potential Atlanta spinoff. Make sure to go on my page and check it out if you haven't done that yet. While all this was going down, Tariq went to Salim's hoping to find Diana. Pinky was supposed to keep eyes on her. But the car Salim gave Diana was in the garage and she took the back way out. Almost like Salim knew somebody was watching her. But it didn't take long for Salim to give Diana up. Once Tariq put the pistol to his head, he told him everything. It's almost like when Tariq put the pistol to Dre asking for Ray Ray's address. Because like Ghost said to Dre, 
he could have gave Tariq the wrong address. And if Selim actually cared about Diana, that's what he would have done too. But when Tariq told him about how easy it was for him to bitch up, he went for the gun and Tariq ended up killing him. Which probably would be for the best because if he didn't, I think Selim would have called the cops and got him arrested for home evasion or something like that once he left. I just hope Selim's house doesn't have any kind of security cameras. I tried looking to see if it had a ring camera in front, but it didn't show a wide enough angle to see. But Tariq is getting slick at the mouth again this season, and I love it. This was one of the main reasons why he became my favorite character on Power in the first place, when everybody else hated him, is because the way he used to talk shit to Ghost. Then Tariq tracked Diana down in Greenwich and broke in the front door, and as he had the gun pointed at Diana, Monet walked in and let him know that Diana was pregnant. And when he asked what that had to do with him, Diana told him it was his. And I definitely think she was telling the truth to Tariq because the fact if it was Salim's child, she would have told him while she was with him. But Tariq, shocked by the news, he was about to be a father, took off without saying anything. But the good thing is, is that Monet thinks Tariq is the shooter and squashed it with him as long as he squashed things with Drew and Diana, taking any potential target off of Tasha, at least for now, because in power, the truth usually eventually comes to the light. And Tariq then went to meet up with Brayden at the club they were moving product that night with Elle's group performing. And Tariq stressed out about Diana being pregnant with his child, needed to hit the blunt and a drink. The fact that he needed a drink in addition to him the blunt is something to keep an eye on because the fact that his father and grandfather both had drinking problems. And it just so happened that while sitting at the bar, Tariq spotted Anya getting her party on and asked if he could buy her a drink. And while Tariq is making a move on Noma's daughter, Anya, Kane went back to see Noma again after Drew called him a mama's boy, echoing what Noma's been saying since she first started catching feelings for him. And Kane let Noma know that he wasn't a mama's boy or her boy, that he is his own man. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.